very excited. Yes. So yes. thank you. Like for you to join the project. Well, I was extremely flattered that Mike Flanagan thought of me for this role, and um, I was very nervous, you know, turning in my self tape. I didn't know that. I probably didn't have to try so hard on it, but I, <laughs> but I did work really hard on it, and there was a big monologue, and it's the one that you first meet me, one of the first scenes you meet me at, right, Cliff? So um, I, I turned it in, and then literally like a few hours later, I got a call, like, they love it, so I didn't have to even wait too long, and then literally this, as soon as we had the paperwork signed I was getting in my car and I drove up to Vancouver with my dog because they needed us to quarantine for two weeks so it was a very fast process and and uh, I got to meet Mike via Zoom and uh, you know I watched everything that he had done when I found out that I was going to be this person and and I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying. So, and just to backtrack a little bit, what can you tell us about your character and your role in the show? Right. So, my character is a she's a physician, and she has kind of taken it upon herself after her own son dies of brain cancer. Um, she takes it upon herself to open a hospice for kids who are teenagers and young adults. Who you know, a lot of those kids don't have a place to go. But other times, like being in a hospital and and kind of dying with hooked up to machines and not having any real control over your life, she wants to give these kids a different opportunity. And um, when you're terminal, you know, you don't know whether you're going to live six months or a year or maybe even two years, but... It's a great, it's a great thought, like project for everybody to just think. Okay, if I knew that I was going to die in a year, what would I do? What, how would I live? And what kind of friendships would I want to make? And how, you know, what do I want to organize my day? So, it's a really unique um, situation that I don't think people in America really think about very right. often. Right. Yeah. No, this is a story we haven't ever seen in TV either right. to this degree. So was that something that was really it was exciting really exciting to me? I mean, you might know that I lost my own son to brain cancer four years ago, and when I read the when I read the sides, you know, for the audition, I literally like burst into tears because I felt I, I really felt like it was a ghost story of my very own, like some something very supernatural was happening that I was being asked to play this role and um, I felt very equipped I mean if anything I you know I I would tell Mike like okay I'll probably cry like the first couple of times I run through this but believe me just stick with me and I'll be able to deliver it like straight face like a doctor would right. but um, watching these kids perform they're so realistic right they're so good at their at, per, at their performances that it was some days just truly heartbreaking watching them have to play out these very Ang- so such anguish, you know, and um, and I hope, I mean, it's bizarre to say, but I think people are going to really appreciate it and really love going there with these kids. Speaking of the kids, you know, you have this huge cast of, of young actors, mm-hmm. and were you able to sort of, like, corral them somewhat, be a little bit of a ringleader, <laughs> or were you just kind of sitting back being like, oh, kids these days? It was like herding cats. <laughs> right, right. It was herding cats, and, I mean, they are so... Uh, adept at their social medias mm-hmm. and they they always were um, they, they just had so much fun together that I usually was a fly on the wall just watching them have fun and if anything I probably was a big wet blanket for their fun <laughs> because I, I'd walk in the room and they would suddenly like start to behave and I'm like no no keep playing I want to listen to you guys talking but there was very few opportunities for us to be together as a cast right. um, a couple times at Mike's house a couple table readings but in general it was very, very frustrating that we didn't get to, like, really hang out a lot. Right, right. So I'm looking forward to a second season so we can all, like, like really be there for each yeah. other on the set. Absolutely. Yeah, I was going to ask about that cliffhanger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you see for Dr. Stanton in a well, possible season two? <laughs> well, we've obviously revealed that she has a much closer relationship with Bright Cliff than we imagined, right? And the whole... Um, the cultish atmosphere that she, you know, must have been part of from the tattoo that we see on her neck. So I think we'll be revealed who she is. I'm not going to give that away. <laughs> but she, um, you know, she obviously has cancer too, which I think is super interesting when you look back and see how she was talking to the kids and 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 helping them along their path that's you know very painful. So do you obviously. know what's going on with her? Do you have this? I don't. Okay. I mean Mike gave me some hints 
And and he actually, when I read the final script, number 10, I thought, like, oh, this is something he just, like, decided to do. But no, apparently it was something in his mind the whole time that he was going to end the show with this kind of a kind of a cliffhanger. So. But he never let me know about it. <laughs> never let me know about it until maybe, like, probably last July, you know, when I read the script. You mentioned being separated from the rest of the cast. What was it like when you saw it all put together, especially the stories within the story? Oh, I'm just, I'm just like you watching it because, I mean, on any normal show or movie, you, you're there for your co-stars sometimes if they have a really tough scene or if there's a lot of action or something you want to watch it get shot. And you go and you watch and you sit in the director's chairs that they have by the, you know, cameras and you get to kind of participate uh, silently watching. But... This has been like watching a brand new show. Like I knew the plots, but I didn't know how they were shot. I didn't know, I didn't know what my co-stars were doing with their parts a lot of the time. Because when they come to group therapy, like it's usually like a really down day for everybody, right? And everybody's really sad, or everybody's really like having a problem processing something. So I don't get to see them laughing and joking and, and horsing around and you know and their romances I you know I didn't really get to witness that and I love their I love the um Aya I mean Aya and Sorian's relationship on screen I think it's so tender and really beautiful can I question? can sure. I ask about playing Satan yes I, my, <laughs> thank Mike, you for asking Mike this morning mentioned that you particularly love the stories within a story so yeah. what was that like well you know as an actor this is your dream job when you get to play several different kinds of characters and I decided okay when I, I picked some pictures of a certain woman that I think is like incredibly cool looking who has white hair and so I said I really think the devil should look like her and um, it might be like Elon Musk's mom, <laughs> um, someone like her who's so beautiful and uh, if you've ever seen her, so striking and I'm like, I, I would like to use her as my model and, um, and then I said I do think she should have tattoos all over her body and she should also like have like a kind of a fanciful hairstyle and uh, and so they put that together and it was so fun creating the devil and you know and she has these nails and she has this I mean you didn't see it but my purse had like brass knuckles on it I mean she was bad <laughs> really bad that's great like a dream come true for me to play the devil after being Nancy Thompson my whole life it's like <laughs> ah, I'm so nice I'm so nice everybody thinks I'm so sweet like ah, I get to play the devil that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.